What's up, everybody? Welcome to Kind of Funny Games Daily for Monday, October 15th, 2018. I'm one of your hosts, Greg Miller, alongside Fran Mirabella the <laughs> Third. What is up, everybody? Woo! Thank now, you, Fran. For all last week. Yes. Not even. I guess Friday. Yeah. I was promoting. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mystery guest on Monday. You don't want to miss it. Mm. And then I tweeted right before this. Mystery guest is here. You want to... So many people are like, Fran, why does this matter? Yeah. The answer, of course, is that Fran, for the first time in 18 years, you don't work at IGN.com. No. This is my first day of not working at IGN in 18 years. I've joked. I've graduated. It's, it's, <laughs> it only took you. You were an 18-year 18 18 senior. 18 years, and I'm an adult now, so I finally graduated. Um, yeah, I just, like, I love my job. Loved. Man, I gotta get yeah, you. Oh, yeah. Tense. Dude, you wait, went through this. Wait, oh, it's gonna be so hard for you to stop saying we. Yeah. It, it's gonna be hard for you to, st to not write I'll ING. Never stop. Because I was there so long. You too, right? I mean, there's oh, yeah. just so much at IGN that oh, yeah, you we're still accomplished. At IGN. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? There's, there's a DNA there. But anyway, so I was there at IGN for a very long time. I uh, really liked my job, absolutely. But I became VP of video. And with that comes a lot of business needs, a lot yeah. of things to do on that end. And I've always been in my heart, you know, more of a creative director, a content sure. person. Uh, you know me. I love being on well, a show like this. I, it's one, definitely one of those things that, and I'm not trying to take away from anybody anywhere, you're one of, and not the founders, but you're one of the founders, right, of IGN in Pretty terms much. of the fact that, yeah, yes, you you rise to this level of VP, you run video, you, you're in meetings all day long planning. Yeah. It's easy to forget that you got the job because Cass Messina saw you on <laughs> message boards, right, running your own site and doing your own yeah, Nintendo coverage. Exactly. That was how I, I didn't even know I would end up here. I don't, I, you, you had a more of a uh, predictable path, I would say, in the sense you were like training to be a writer. Mm, you know, mm, I was mm. training to be a computer engineer. I wanted to work on like graphics chips and stuff, yeah. but I wanted to design. I thought I was going to design the next Dreamcast or ideally Nintendo system. Oh, wow. That was I didn't even know that about you. I, it was crazy, dude. I yeah. really wanted to design the next Nintendo system. This was when Project Dolphin or GameCube was happening. Sure. But anyway, that's how I arrived here. I always thought I'd come out a few years, review Majora's Mask, a couple other things, get it out of the way, yeah, and then yeah. go back to school. Yeah. But little did I know, video on the internet turned out it was kind of a big deal. Yeah. And I just started doing it, and it was in 2005. They're like, "Hey, by the way, do you uh, do you want to start a video team here?" And it's funny. At first, I was like, "I don't know. I want to video write. on the internet." Yeah, I right. <laughs> I was like, "I, I kind of want to write still. Want to interview people." Um, but I slept on it. I was like, yeah. And then I started to hire some more people. Nick Scarpino mm -hmm. being one of the mm -hmm. very first video team members. Yeah. So here I am today, and that's that's also what strikes me. You guys have gone on to do such amazing stuff. Um, all these people that have worked for me and now moved on, and I've been at IGN all this time. Right. And I wanna work for myself, you know? There's a combination of things that I'm gonna be doing to accomplish that, but I really hope that content is one of those things, because I've, I've just always loved it. So that, yeah, do you think it fell into, well, as an outsider, right, I know when we, we're leaving IGN when we were starting kind of funny, all that stuff. And it all happened organically yeah. at once. I started falling in love with Twitch. And it was yeah. one of those things that at the time, and this sounds crazy, you know, that wasn't really something happening at IGN where a lot of people, yep. people were tinkering with it, but nobody was like, I'm doing yeah. it every day or every whatever. Blah, Alfredo. Blah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and he was, I think, even after me, right? Yeah. Uh, I noticed you eventually started doing that. Yeah. And it wasn't too long after we went, but maybe a couple no. of years. Almost or something three like years ago now. Did you, why did you start that? And then. Is that part of the reason you, you're branching out on your own now and leaving IGN? Two very good questions. Uh, I started it because in, in a job uh, where you look over content and see what's happening in video, I thought I understood Twitch. And I sure. had people like Alfredo that were doing it and went on to do it. And I tried to tune in and I was like, huh. Like I come from that traditional background. I'm like, if I want to know about a game, I'll watch a quick video on YouTube. Oh yeah, yeah. Or I'll yeah. just watch a trailer and then like, why would I'm I watch done. somebody play it? Why for like hours, right? Yeah, yeah. But then I started to like watch them. I'm like, you know, I want to try this out. And I was starting to play Destiny a lot, yeah. actually. Yeah, yeah. Which the community at, at large for Destiny was on Twitch. So I said, I gotta try this out. What's it gonna harm? So I put up my little, I call it peephole cam with the uh, PlayStation <laughs> eye. Oh sure, yeah, and it was yeah, like yeah. this little vignetted circle. Oh yeah, I, I still use that at home. <laughs> it's so like <laughs> scary looking. But I started there. And it's funny, as a video producer, I, it was kind of hideous, but I'm like, now nah, let me just try it. So anyway, I kind of got the bug there. Yeah. And I noticed it was so much about the community and that live interaction, um, but the community more than anything. Sure, All of a sudden, repeat people coming back there to support you. But similar vibe, and I have a lot of people now that come to my Twitch channel, they're like, this is like the least toxic Twitch I've ever been to. And at least for me, that means a lot because 
it means that I've been able to build something and it's sure. pretty small right now, but I really, I enjoy that. And honestly, I love playing games, Yeah. but I was trying to figure out, and that's where I'm at today, right? I love playing games and every time I'm like at IGN, I have no time to play games. You know, by the time I get home, there's just no time left. I figured out that streaming was some a way that I could maybe further my brand and my career while playing games, something that I love. And that's just kind of where it all started. Um, what was the second question? I think you answered it. It was, it was that was part of it. Like, why did you get into streaming? And then right. what was is that part of the decision? I think it's pretty clearly oh, yeah, right? Yeah, it is. So I do want to continue streaming. I yeah. do it. Here's the rub, right? And what what I'm trying to figure out. I usually do it at like 10 p.m. at night. Starting yeah. today, my time is my own again. And I got to figure out what I do that's on the business side. All the things I want to do with you know what I've learned at IGN because I still want to produce videos. Sure. I still want to be hopefully part of business out there. You know, I need to make some money as well. Yeah. But I want to try streaming uh, and content creation period during the day and okay. you know that starts today figuring yeah, out as soon as you go home we'll, we'll see we'll see yeah <laughs> right on the twitch right yeah probably where you know can people mean? keep up with you on twitch twitch tv slash fm3 okay underscore not three characters fm3 with the underscore but if you search for fm3 easy to find you search fran you'll find it yeah and probably fran now i have an old fran mirabella twitch channel that don't go there not you'll uh, see like fm3 is super easy to okay. find well i'm so excited for you fran yeah, thank you for letting me come on here. Oh, no, and, I'm and, sure you're going to be on here quite a bit from here on out. <laughs> get the word. I, I, I do actually want to take one moment to say of like, wait a second, how come at IGN, like, how come you announced here on Kind of Funny and not IGN? Well, it's very easy. One, you have such an engaged audience that loves all the same stuff. And it did come down the numbers and you have a, a huge audience. And secondly, your community here at Kind of Funny has already been so supportive for me. Yeah. I have them coming in all the time. Well, that and yeah. the, you know, it's that thing where I think we all, the kind of funny best friends run in a very tight circle and it is very much, you, we've talked about it before, right? Yeah. Where I think this sounds weird. Stick with me at IGN, IGN so big and so diverse that somebody who's reading one article might not even know who Fran is. Whereas somebody who watches fire team chat obviously would. Yeah. But it is that thing we've talked about it before of like you hadn't been on the show yet ever. Like and I don't even mean the games deal yeah. like in general, but you were already a character. I know. Right? People already knew the banana nut muffin story. Yeah, and they oh already every time Nick makes fun of Fran or something, they're like, ooh, nice. You know what I mean? We like you, we knew yeah. who you were. They know who you are. <laughs> so when you ooh, became yeah. your own Twitch thing, right? Yeah. And like it made sense that I obviously would go pop in and say, Hey everybody, and I would see a bunch of kind of funny emotes. And then when yes. people when you'd pop up or get mentioned here, a lot of Fran emotes. Exactly. Seven, nine. But but to finish I just want to say, like, why didn't you announce an IG? And I also didn't think it was appropriate to go on an IGN show mm. and say, hey, hire for me for work like I've done at IGN because I left now. So hire me and come check out my Twitch channel. Sure. But I'm still going to be back on Fireteam Chat, obviously, to say my farewells. But I wanted people to know that there was no, like, I love all my friends at IGN. I love IGN. Except Destin. Except Destin. Um, and so that, that, that was the only reason for coming here. And I love you you guys. Uh, kind of funny. So thank you. We're excited for this next chapter. We're happy to be part of it. Thank you. For, so many people for are mad. So let me do this. This is Kind of Funny Games Daily. If you didn't know, each and every week down a variety of platforms, we run you through the nerdy video game news you need to know about. If you like that, be part of the show, kindoffunny.com slash KFGD with your questions, comments, bad PSN names for a few more weeks, and everything else under the video game sun. Then watch us record it live on twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames. If you're watching live, you have a special job. Go to kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong and tell us what we screw up as we screwed up. I like that Kevin literally <laughs> screws up as I'm saying that. No need, no need to report that. We, we <laughs> we saw that one. So we can set the record straight on youtube.com slash kind of funny games and for everybody listening later on podcast services around the globe. Housekeeping for you. Extra Life 2018 is November 3rd. It's right around the corner and we'll be streaming games and shenanigans for 24 hours as we raise money for the Children's Miracle Network. Uh, you can join right now. Join our team and raise money and play games as part of Team Kind of Funny or just donate to one of the Kind of Funny members over at kindoffunny.com slash extra life. And then today we're brought to you by Hims, MeUndies, and Loot Crate. But I'll tell you about that later. For now, let's begin the show with what is and forever will be the Roper Report. <laughs> Time for some news. Look at that. He's, he's on it. You know, you know what I mean, Kevin? No, Never again, Fran. Okay, calm down. Four items on the Roper Report. Oh, Baker's dozen! Number one, I'm going to give you the whole shebang here. 100-hour work weeks have been apparently part of Red Dead Redemption 2. Oh this is via James Bachelor over at GamesIndustry.biz. We're going to read what he talks about because, first off, let's dial it back even further. Vulture had an article with Dan Hauser, of course, one of the Hauser brothers, the heads of Rockstar. They put it up. It's a fascinating read, covers all sorts of shenanigans about uh, what's happening with Red Dead 2. But one thing a lot of people have keyed in and on, including Games Bachelor, was this talking about a 100-hour work week. I'm going to read that. However, IGN 
You know them. <laughs> they already have a response from Dan Hauser about the Love interview and the way it's being spoiled out. This is a long one. Stick with me. It's going to lead to interesting conversations. Dan Hauser said that the team has been working 100 hour weeks several times in 2018, later adding that compared to previous Rockstar projects, quote, this was the hardest. His brother, thank you for the air quotes. <laughs> His brother Sam told the site earlier this year, we've poured everything we have into Red Dead Redemption 2. We have really pushed ourselves as hard as we can. The result is a game that Dan claims is 65 hours long, although five hours of content has actually been cut. In both 300,000 animations, 500,000 lines of dialogue recorded by 700 voice actors and even more lines of code. The level of detail seen in the trailers and the glowing previews suggest this work has paid off, but it brings to mind the Rockstar Spouse incident around the original Red Dead Redemption. Back in 2010, just a few months before the game launched, an open letter allegedly written on behalf of the wives of Rockstar San Diego employees claimed that teams, the team, sorry, was expected to work 60 hour weeks, 12 hour days, including Saturdays, or they would face disciplinary action. Rockstar later attributed this to, quote, people taking the opinions of a few anonymous posters on message boards as fact. We, this is a quote again, we're saddened if any former members of any studio did not find their time here enjoyable or creatively fulfilling and wish them well with finding an environment more suitable to their temperaments and needs. But the vast majority of our company are focused so solely on delivering cutting edge interactive entertainment, the studio said at the time. Quote, we've always cared passionately about the people working here and have always tried to maintain a supportive creative environment. There is simply no way Rockstar could continue to produce such large scale, high quality games without this. That being said, making great games is very challenging, which is why we have and will continue to try to keep hold of some of the best talent in the industry and support them in every way we can. Back in February, we asked Strauss Zelnick, again, this is gamesindustry.biz, CEO of Rockstar's parent company, Take-Two Interactive, what the company was doing to ensure that a sequel to Red Dead Redemption 2, or Red Dead Redemption, did not also produce a sequel to the Rockstar spouse. Zelnick responded that the company is really proud of its work practices. Quote, we have a hardworking company, Zelnick said at the time. It's a privilege to work at our company and our labels, and I believe that our work practices are sound and appropriate. If... I'm sorry, it is a very busy time, but it's a time that people are anxious to participate in, and I stand behind it. The Vulture interview also reveals that in addition to 700 voice actors, there are an additional 500 motion capture art actors, making for a cast of 1,200, all of which is represented by SAG-AFTRA, although there was no word on the impact of the 2016 strike had on the production. So, that's the, the big nut of this part that got broken out and people flipped out about yeah. it. <clears throat> yeah, history of maybe some questionable, practice, right. questionable practices, but then him saying, we're working 100-hour work weeks. And being, it turns out there might be more context. And what you saw immediately right was uh, developers take to Twitter with this yes. information. I don't mean like in a bad way, but there was the, the knee-jerk responses of like, whoa, this isn't something to be proud of. No. The way it reads in the interview is something we're proud that we're all doing 100-hour yeah. work weeks. Yeah, I mean, it's been for uh, forever, really, in the games industry. There's this pride in I worked like a we ton. Crunch. We yeah, I have a mattress time. at my desk. De yeah, another term they use, a death march of like, I can't wait to get into the death march was actually a quote that so, uh, someone was talking about on Twitter. But yeah, I saw the same thing. It's like, it's a trigger point. Yeah. Because there's this other side of like, that's unhealthy. Yeah, of course. <laughs> and that led to a whole of. bunch of people writing into kindoffunny.com slash KFGD with angry responses. And a few that weren't, but we'll get to that in a second as we Are they mad at you more. or Dan Hauser? They were mad <laughs> at Dan Hauser and then there were there was a couple different people who were like, hey, I work in this industry, not video games, not tech, not whatever. I work an 80 hour work week and I understand that that sucks, and it sucks that somebody's being forced to do this, but everybody needs to understand this isn't something central or limited to the video game industry. It is, we'll no. get to that in a second. And we'll there's also the whether or not you get paid for it, but that it's right. less about that here, but that's a fact too, obviously. However, Dan Hauser uh, saw this. IGN reached out and got a statement. Here's the statement. There seems to be some confusion arising from my interview with Harold Goldberg. That's over at Vulture. Uh, the point I was trying to make in the article was related to how the narrative and dialogue in the game was crafted, which was mostly what we talked about, not about the different processes of the wider team. After working on the game for seven years, the senior writing team, which consists of four people, Mike Unsworth, Rupert Humphreys, Laszlo, and myself, had, as we always do, three weeks of intense work when we wrapped everything up. Three weeks not years. We have all worked together for at least 12 years now, and I feel we need to get everything finished. After so many years of getting things organized and ready on this project, we needed to check and finalize everything. 
More importantly, we obviously don't expect anyone else to work this way. Across the whole company, we have some senior people who work very hard purely because they're passionate about a project or their particular work. And we believe that passion shows in the games we release. But that additional effort, that additional effort is a choice. And we don't ask or expect anyone to work like this. Lots of other senior people work an entirely different way and are just as productive. I'm just not one of them. <laughs> no one, senior or junior, is ever forced to work hard. I believe we go to great lengths to run a business that cares about its people and to make a company that's a great place for them to work. So, dialing it back, yeah. obviously, because that's that's the interesting thing, and you can even speak more to this than me as your career uh, in the games industry has been longer than mine because you're an old man. <laughs> In the this is what I came here for. Greg. <laughs> Welcome to Independent Life. To helping you me can't out, go man. cry to pair <laughs> now, and I mean, oh my back now. Uh, crunch again used to be this thing that was celebrated, and and to yeah. the point of it, we, it's it's definitely a dirty word now. And there was a thing uh, I forget for what it was, but Walt Williams, obviously writer of Spec Ops Line, worked on Battlefront Two with Mitch. He had done a piece in a he had written a book and then released a segment of it, I think on Polygon, mm. that was his like love letter to Crunch and what good can come from Crunch, yeah. and got a whole bunch of flack from that. And it is the thing right now where I feel it's. The industry is in this weird growth spurt, right? Because it is so young, but it is the thing of like, yeah, bro, we're, we're and I shouldn't say bro because I'm not putting in a bro thing, but the way I think of it of like, they're I, all surfers. I go, <laughs> yeah, man, hang 10. <laughs> I think back to how we used to be at E3 where it was like, yeah, we're up, I'm writing a DS preview yeah. at three in the morning. Yeah. Like, yeah. Now that's a shitty way to work, right? And I feel like that's catching up to video games in general. It is. Yeah, no, I mean, you hit the nail on the head. It's catching up. There's a stigma because of like, you should be ethical. Games make tons of money. The big ones. Yeah. Other people struggle with it. Um, but, you know, it really went, when you first read this, you're like, oh boy, here we go again. Yeah, yeah. And that was my first reaction is a lot, like, Mr. Hauser, you got to remember talking about 100 hour work weeks with your team. This is going to blow up. Um, but now you can see that's not what he was saying. And yeah. I read what he said. I was like, this feels like, you know, like all of us when I'm going to college or whatever and I like just procrastinate or <laughs> it all catches up with you. They already delayed the game a year and they realized they just couldn't get it all how they wanted it exactly. So they spent three weeks, 100 hour work weeks between a handful of people. That seems totally fine to me if they were passionate to do well, it. But it's also the way you work, right? And, I, and I'm not trying, there's a whole bunch of different pieces to this, right? Mm -hmm. Where right now, to bring all, all we can ever do is our personal context. Mm -hmm. I'm working on the Kind of Funny Game Showcase. Yeah. This press conference we're doing yes. in December, oh, man. which is so much more work than I thought it would be, right? <laughs> to where like Andrea was like, oh, I'm not on the show tomorrow. I'm like, do you want to do it? Just do it with Alex Rubens. You do it. You do it. And she's like, okay, cool. So I can answer emails and take care of stuff. And that's something I chose to do and, I, and I'm into it. But then there, and that's me as a personal individual. Then there is this question though of how many times at, maybe at IGN, obviously, because that's where we worked before, but it was that thing of leaving before your boss and I think any business mm. right is kind of frowned upon so if you see the writing team still slaving sure. away in there do you have to wrestle with that in your head of well they're working really crazy right. maybe I should stay later I think that that is a very good point it's a slippery slope is have you made it clear to everyone this clear yeah but that's what was going on yeah and by the way Dan Hauser very powerful man oh, yeah. what if he was just sitting there working away and his writing team felt compelled to stay and if they felt it forced upon them. And now, I'm not even talking not about the writing team. The no. writing team, I'm sh Laslo, they, he's been there forever. Laslo's just down. That's the next thing, yeah. exactly. Now they're all there, maybe optionally, maybe not. And then you're right. Yeah. Everybody's looking in that glass window like, I guess I'll grab I, dinner I, I got to walk right back by yeah, them. I got to walk right. by them to get to the elevator. How do you make yeah. that clear to company and, and, and be thoughtful about it? And that's the, in, the, in, the, in the wake of, you know, and Rockstar has always been a very private company in terms yeah. of what's going on behind closed doors because they, they want it to be, the Rockstar brand. It's. I remember that I've only interviewed Dan Hauser once, and I remember yeah. that was like Super a private. watershed moment where I like I, at IGN, no one ever gave a flying fuck who I talked to. But <laughs> then when a Dan Hauser came around, everybody came over yeah. with "ask this, do this, don't say that." I'm like, all right, geez. Yep. Uh, you wonder about this one. In has it gotten? Was the spouse thing a real thing? Did it get better afterwards? Were there all hands where they were like, we need to change, we need to yeah. do these things? Uh, the fact that they've released a statement so quickly, I think, under, is them. Hey. Again, you know, the Hauser brothers, not reclusive, but not out that often in front of talking. Yeah, about they don't stuff. speak this quickly that often. You're exactly. Right. This is very rare. But it is that question of like, you know, here it kind of funny, right? We've been, you know, historically, we take the final two weeks of December off, then come back on January 5th, our anniversary. But the problem is January 5th keeps sliding deeper and deeper into weeks. Yeah. So like right now we're debating if we only take basically one week of December off the last week and then come back and then kind of have a half off. Yeah. 
But that's the, but this so like right <laughs> now as we wrestle with are we taking the week of the seventeen off? It is this I and I keep having it and Kevin refuses to listen. Honest conversation of cool, you know you don't need to come in. We can figure it out. You you want those it's, days it's off to the, sleep? Go ahead and do it. It's the same conversation you're having now, where it's like if your bosses are coming in and you live five minutes away, literally five minutes. But away. I'm telling you, as your boss, right? Like I don't give a shit. I'd rather you not come in because I'm gonna have to hear about but it all talking to it. him. Nobody's bitch, gonna bitch. believe that. Um, no, but we're not a normal company. That's that's we're for all sure. dressing up as Ghostbusters <laughs> and walking around in San Francisco this afternoon. Like we're not normal, and I th- I that that's why I feel like for us. And that, but you're right. For us, it's easier to have this conversation and try to stress to Kev that like, no, really, like Cool Greg doesn't Take care. care. Cool Greg's got nothing to do. He'll come in and do it. But it that's me struggling to tell that to what? It's a company of seven, but of uh, four employees. Like if there's three co-founders and four employees and it, yeah. I can't get that message to him one-on-one and we get together in our pajamas and play Monster Hunter literally. Like how is it for Dan Hauser to say that to a company as big as Rockstar yeah. and stuff like that? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think there's any one solution. Like I said, every company is different, but I, I do believe in, especially now, and I see it a lot out there now in the gaming community, but certainly having known many programmers, developers, there's just a culture of overworking yourself. And sure. and it kind of sucks because it does affect your mental health. Sure. And inevitably, that is the danger here. It's not just that you're working hard. The, the thing behind it is your mental and physical health. And so I do believe that companies need to have uh, something in place. Yeah. So you might have to force Kevin to not work. If you believe that it's right for him, I would say maybe you have to tell him, I'm sorry, you can't. You know, Because when you get into the optional side of things, sorry, Kevin, you just got to like stay at home. Tried. I like but you know what I mean? I don't, I don't know that that's the right solution, but something's got to be there to make sure that you as a company are taking care of your employees' mental health. And mm-hmm. I would actually argue that having optional, hey, we're having a, a zen uh, hour that you can participate in, those things I don't think work as well because they're totally optional. Yeah. And I can tell you personally, I mean, we have like, you can get an optional like a massage or a, a whatever, you know, we have those things at IGN sometimes. Where yeah. the hell was that when like I was there? I think you still pay for it, but it's like you can take that time. But I'm like, I can't take an hour and then I'll be one of those people that's doing it at the level I'm at. So I think you got to put something in place that's a little more of a mandate. I, I, I don't know. I, yeah. you know I'm not why, running my own company quite yet. Sure. Maybe I'll figure it out sure. you know, in the near future. But that, That's why when I worked at IGN, I instituted a two-hour um, smash uh <laughs> You had to like your li- Is this day. how the email read? Was this <laughs> <laughs> I'm instituting uh two hours. No, all the words aren't coming to me. You know Smash. what I'm talking about. Wait, you, Kevin, were, yeah, you, you used to play Smash for two were hours. Were you doing this every day? Shut up. You knew in addition you to were, lunch? Hey, hey, hey. Just so you know, <laughs> you were in there a lot of the time. So uh, I was hundred percent not playing uh, Smash Brothers for two hours. Do you remember when HR came over and told him to stop day. drinking at his desk? <laughs> no. You don't Did remember that, that happen? Yeah. You know what? There's a lot Wait. of things that at the level I was at, they, especially they, they, they filter to you with Nick Scarpino, uh, trained myself. Uh, I uh, hear no evil, see me. no evil. I'm, I'm like, pretty I don't, sure I asked permission to go buy the bottle of. Uh, I did vodka. not know you were Nick drinking. Nick was just a garbage can filing cabinet. Anything comes to him, right Fran, into it. Nobody Fran, cares. I think I asked you permission, and it was when the holiday party <laughs> got canceled and everyone was bummed out. I feel like there's so much that's being said on air that just can't be taken back. <laughs> I can just, you erase this part? Uh, obviously, I'm just kidding. That no. didn't happen. <laughs> number two on the rope. Well, to wrap up number one, of course, with all this stuff. Like, I, I'm interested to see, I was interested to see how many people today wrote in, like, I'm in a really tough spot of, like, I can't wait for Red Dead, but I don't want it to be if people are being, you know, worked yeah. beyond their means or beyond their desires. One out of ten, how do you think Dan handled the situation? Oh, at post? Yeah. Like, in terms of handling? With his response. Oh, I mean, I think they handled it uh, eight or nine. Like there the, it is. The, the Put be- it on the critics game. The best thing to do. I agree. Seven, nine for you. <laughs> the best thing to do, right, is, like, not say it or be very clear then. But I also yeah. understand what it's like to be in an interview for three hours, and you say something that you think is crystal clear. Yeah. And then they say something, and you're like, oh, no. I, oh, you see it in print. You're like, we yeah. weren't on the exact same thread here, right? Yeah. Yeah. Again, the recourse was awesome. I I did rated a nine. He did awesome. Yeah. Mm, okay. Good. Number two. This is a very short one compared to the giant one we've had. Uh, there's not going to be any Halo Infinite at XO18. Uh, Brian Gerard, right? Yeah. Uh, community director, director at 343 got in a conversation with a kid. He responded, and I say kid, somebody on Twitter who asked about Halo Infinite information at the event, and he said, "Quote: I'd love to start getting more info out there, and we're talking internally about what, when, where, how, but nothing planned. Currently planned for XO18." You so maybe this, something will happen, but no. Yeah. As of now, no. Do you think this adds more credence to the fact that it's definitely a next-gen game? 
Because that's been the sort of thought and rumor mm. is that this is actually a next gen product. Because they haven't been explicit, I don't think, up to this point. If I've if I've been able to follow it. Kind of funny. Com slash you're wrong. Um, <laughs> Am I? We'll find out. Yeah, we will. <laughs> uh, well, my my main question, and this is weird. Maybe it's for both. You know, one of those. What is next gen? I yeah. really, I really do think they're going to be like whatever next gen is for Xbox. I do think it's going to be. It also plays in your Xbox One. Yeah, doesn't have this, doesn't that. have that, but it, it does. Because they're doing this cloud, X Cloud or whatever right. now, which is the idea. Like you can have an Android phone or maybe a uh, Windows phone. Um, you can have just play it on your phone. I know there's not one anymore, uh, but you can play the same games at a you know lower graphical setting sure. or whatever. So you're right. Maybe it just works across all the platforms in the future. And, and that's my biggest question about next gen in general. Is it's like an infinite gen? line of infinite gameplay gen. systems to yeah until it all gets streaming. Yeah, exactly. That's the future. That, I mean, that is the holy grail. I assume most people know that, but if not, everything will be and should be in the cloud eventually. Nobody. I mean, I love hardware. We went through the same thing with like digital assets, right? But um, eventually, it's going to be just like Netflix, where you're like, as long as I get the high quality bit rate I need, yeah. I don't want to like, you know, own all these games physically or whatever. Yeah. I mean, we do so much stuff digitally anyway. So you're just one more step away from I don't need they're, to store it. Locally. And that's where it's going to keep going. I feel like is they're, they're going to keep trying to wean people off of this because so many people are like they're writing all the time. I yeah. want hardware and I, I want the copies and I want I want to have it on my shelf and I want this thing. Then the internet yeah. sucks where I am. And there's all these things that once they f turn that corner and that's no longer a problem and 5G's everywhere or whatever it's going to be. That's when it gets interesting. Yeah. How many times have we been let down by this promise, though? Uh, on live, on Gaikai, live, uh, yeah. Do PlayStation streaming. So we were talking about it, and like, oh man, like somebody was talking about it, like it, last week when we we're doing all this stuff about streaming of like, oh yeah, and on the bones of this, and I'm like, no, I remember Scott Lowe yeah. walking around IGN with a Gen One iPad playing Orkham uh, City, I think. On yeah, it. you know what I mean. Like on live was way ahead of the game, and nobody I mean, cares. Gotta believe it's just you know, too much lag. I do believe. Yeah. We'll get there. But the, the technology is, uh, it's. I don't know if it's far away, but it seems Wait, really far away still, played, even though... Have you played Assassin's Creed on... Uh, no, I didn't try the Google um, Chrome Project Stream. It's, it's shocking. Was it smooth? Like, the gameplay delay wasn't there? It was really yeah. smooth. Yeah, it's really, it was awesome it, yeah. we played it, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think that... Did it look good as well? Uh, well, the problem is we were uh, playing it off... No, let me, let me, let me get there. The problem let me get was... There. We were playing off Jared's tiny, tiny computer, and I he don't a know what the resolution and the Wi-Fi in here and yada. The resolution of the okay. screen, I have no idea what it was. So it was it, it was not great. nearly as clear as well when I'm playing at home on PS4 Pro, but I'm sure with a better connection, a better computer yeah, it would and, be. And that's what we're talking about scalability. Exactly. And you said the right words. I think once we're on 5G and it's spreading, yeah. now we're talking because that's so fast. Yeah. So maybe we'll be close to them. Yeah, I can't wait. Somebody did write in. I didn't didn't make it to the rundown. I didn't think we were going to touch on it. That they did a Assassin's Creed through uh, Project Stream this weekend and had a not great experience with it, which I'm not uh, would, yeah, I'm not shocking. It's going to be case yeah. by case. So but. many things at play. Jared's laptop in particular. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Jared. <laughs> Number three, digital sales of Call of Duty Black Ops 4 have broken some records. This is game, GamesIndustry.biz's Christopher Dring. Call of Duty Black Ops 4 has set new a new digital download record Activision has revealed. The game has achieved Activision's biggest launch day digital sales, besting the likes of Destiny 2. It is also the fastest selling digital game in PlayStation history. It has set a new launch day record for digital games sold via the PlayStation Store. On Xbox One, it also set a record as Activision's biggest Xbox digital launch. The game was made available on PC via Blizzard's Battle.net service for the first time. Parentheses. Historically, the game was sold via Steam. It set a new franchise record with digital PC launch sales more than double what Call of Duty World War II managed to do during the same period in 2017. According to Activision, more people connected online to play Blops 4 during launch day than last year's WW2. The publisher stopped short of saying the game outperformed last year's title. Indeed, physical launch sales of Call of Duty Black Ops 4 declined by almost 50% in the UK compared to Call of Duty World War II. That's the question, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> like, the way these things always come out, you're like, let's see. Let's be as precise D as possible with our word usage to break a record. Yeah, well, but you look at it and you're like, digital game sales are increasing year on year every year, right? Yeah. Uh, what is the Air website? <laughs> that they use. Oh, kind of funny. Dot com slash you're wrong. No, that's that's <laughs> correct. That's correct. Sure right. But it literally it's on track to do the same thing next year in theory, yeah. right? Until things slow down. But um, but I do say reading between the lines and having played a lot of uh, Blackout at least, it I think it's doing pretty darn well. How much have you played? Oh, quite a bit. Uh, I played. Were you streaming it. Yeah, I was streaming it. Twitch.tv slash FM three underscore. That's the one. Thank oh, you wow. very much, Greg. <laughs> uh, first night. Are you partnered? Can people sub? I'm partnered. People can sub. That's one of the best ways to support me and what I'm doing out there. But what if, they, what if they're listening in their car right now? They don't use Twitch, but they have Amazon Prime. 
Well, if you have Amazon Prime, you might have a free sub to give away every month. Otherwise, Jeff Bezos is going to take your money. Yes, so exactly. Go out there and give it to somebody. It doesn't have to be me. It could be kind of funny games. Look at that. Look at Fran. You're I've a professional. Trying. You're ready. Uh, thank you very much. But um, yeah, I played quite a bit on Friday and then Saturday. You know, I had a lot to think about. But um, <laughs> but Friday, I actually hopped in. And this was really interesting. Hopped in. And I am not like an awesome FPS guy as much as I play Destiny and Fortnite and everything. Sure. I'm like, OK. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's always a learning curve. But first that I hopped in and it was my second match. And I almost like lazily uh, got a victory royale or nice. whatever they call it. I was like, uh, okay. And then I was feeling good. And the next day, just hair pullingly bad. Yeah. Just like, yeah, why Everyone, am I everyone's Dude. off work in school and they're ready to go. It was bad the second yeah. day. Because I actually tweeted out, I was like, if you don't think this game's like accessible, it's like, check it out. It's for everybody. The next day, I'm, I'm going to retract my tweet. I'm like, this is, it's bad out there right now. I'm getting crushed. <laughs> You're going to have a bad time. I might have just had some bad drops. But um, uh, Blackout, in particular, the Battle Royale mode, is yeah. a lot of fun. Uh, I can't speak as much to the multiplayer. And Zombies is always like a, a great experience. Yeah. They just launched a patch, I think, uh, for Zombies. And so, so um, I yeah. think it's worth checking out if you. Friday, like. we ca I came home, dropped in, did one uh, blackout match. Just to get a feel for it, see what it was like. And I was like, oh, cool. I could see playing more of this. Uh, closed it and went back to Assassin's Creed. Yeah, I'm like, I, I got work to do. That I got work to do. so big. I saw you beat it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We yet. have questions coming up in room. Right yet? <laughs> no, I haven't played it yet. Jeez. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Jen's eye roll on Twitter was very much in real life as well. <laughs> that, I think you're crazy to try to do that. I've been before Red Dead. Like, forget about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Number four on the Roper Report, the final news story of the day. Yakuza has hit a very important milestone. This is from Mike Hardens over at VideoGamer.com. Uh, it's, he led talking about how Sonic sold a whole bunch. Like, it's crossed some threshold who the fuck cares but then he gets into this important stuff sega's 2018 integrated report also confirmed that persona and yakuza have sold 9.3 million and 11 million units worldwide respectively while puyo puyo has drummed up 27 million units speaking of yakuza it seems the franchise is finally getting the attention it deserves in the u.s and uk apparently yakuza 6 sold as many copies in the west as it did in japan which definitely wasn't the case for the earlier titles in the past, this is a quote, in the past, the Japanese market has generated the bulk of sales for these series, and although it has elements that are appealing to overseas, oh, and although it, ha uh, and, no, that's just weird translation, however, the game yeah. was not developed with the European and US markets in mind, confirmed Sega's Kenji Matsubara, Matsubara, I banana nailed it. nut muffin Kill. himself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't know Fran's banana it's a nut muffin start. story, we'll tell it another time when Nick's here. Jeez. Okay. Uh, thanks for to painstaking. Thanks to painstaking efforts to create a game that Japanese fans will appreciate. The title has become popular not only in Japan but also won over fans overseas uh, who praise the refined game sense of the title. I believe this is why Yakuza Six: The Song of Life has become such a popular hit around the world. Yeah. Yeah. It, I've always loved the Yakuza games. Yeah, I, yeah. I kind of tapped out. I had enough Yakuza. <laughs> I was wondering, like, why do you think this happened? Do you think it gained traction with the right, like, influencers and just, like, press that, that got the word out? Or that they did something with the game itself? You know, oh, that, I, think it's, I think it's more the fact that it got into the right... I think the games have changed in a way that suddenly you see, you know... Kazuma texting a, bu a bike flipping over with a granny on it or stuff. You're like, what is this? <laughs> yeah. I need to jump in. You watch somebody twitch it. You watch to get the idea yeah. behind it. It's uh, easier to disseminate that information. Whereas when I was reviewing them and I put it up on IGN and the blog roll says Yakuza review, you'd be like, I don't know what Yakuza is. Keep rolling, right? And even yeah. if you read the intro paragraph, exactly. I don't know what this is. Get Yakuza. Don't be a loser. Yeah, exactly. But well, it yeah, we work. had some good strap we lines. Had <laughs> we had some good strap lines at IGN, didn't we? But I, th I think, yeah, it's probably a combination of things, but I did see Max Scoville actually had put up a, t it was just a clip of him like kicking through everything yeah. in a room and it was ridiculous. I also saw some of these like other crazier clips on social. I feel like that actually 100%. has the, contributed a bit Yakuza, to Yakuza uh, is a fun game and great and everything, but it plays the best right in GIFs or even screenshots and the ability to share all that stuff has definitely seen, I think, an uptick in like what is going on. Yeah. There's like a whole great, there's a great Twitter thing that's just Yakuza out of context. Really? Yeah. yeah that's just <laughs> that's, like weird screenshots and quotes from the game and stuff. It's got to be a Reddit as well, I'm sure. Oh, of course, so. yeah. Now, Fran, I can't wait to see what they do with the next Yakuza. Me as well. But it's still so far away. I need something more imminent. Like, say, what came to the mom and grop shops today? Fran, tell me where I'd go. The official list of upcoming software across each and every platform as listed by the Kind of Funny Games Daily Show host each and every weekday. 
do 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 yeah out today defiance 2050 gets a trouble in paradise update hand of fate 2 the acclaimed action role-playing game from defiant development embraces the darkness with the servant and the beast dlc available now on playstation 4 xbox one pc mac and linux and then in the rare monday release on the psn palm reading is out on the playstation <laughs> 4 now if you are like me ladies and gentlemen you said excuse me Palm readings on the PlayStation 4, that sounds like an easy platinum. So you went to find out more about this game. Where I went was the PlayStation Canada store that, store that had this uh, uh, bio for it. Palm Reading Premium is the most luxury and professional palmistry and chronology software out there. You can use it to analyze, read, and master your palm lines and palm fingers without knowing anything of hand reading. Understand yourself better with simple slash quick and entertaining image tests. Get analytics of your own. And I was like, this thing sounds like the easiest platinum in the world. Yeah. Charles J wrote in to kindoffunny.com slash KFGD and said... Greetings, Greg and Mystery Guest. Sorry about that, friend. Okay. Uh, so I was looking through the new releases, and one game popped into my mind for one specific reason. It sounds <laughs> like an easy plat for Greg. It's called, it's called Palm Reading, and it counts as a game according to the PlayStation blog. Yet, there's no trophies tied to it at all. <sighs> I even checked the release history on Steam. I bring this to your attention as I remember a promise. A promise to us that every game would have trophies. And as far as I know, they've kept to that since the implementation. They haven't, but it does matter. Uh, it might be a matter of a lack of gameplay or something, but if Slide, My Name is Mayo, etc. can get platinum trophies, I'd say a palm reading title has at least 10 easy bronze trophies. Man. I concur. Now again, jury is out. We don't know for sure. They, he's going off the, the game wasn't up on PSN yet when I got here uh, the, it, it, the fact that the trophies wouldn't be on exophase yes which, which I did not check kind of funny dot com slash you're wrong go ahead and check it out for me <laughs> but the, uh, Charles J going to steam to look at the, the steam trophy list and there not being any that is troublesome let me see your hand I'm gonna see you gonna, you don't know you haven't played yet trophies are not in your future oh, not- <laughs> damn it Fran <laughs> Sorry, expect- man. that was good that was good I'll I know where you're going that one. Uh, new dates for you Destiny 2's Festival of the Lost begins tomorrow Tuesday, November, or October 16th at 10 a.m. Reset day, Greg. It concludes Tuesday, November 6th at 10 a.m. What is this festival lost all about? Are you excited? Uh, Are you into it? Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, every year, Destiny has these little events where they decorate the tower, and with that come some new engrams and some new mm-hmm. items to buy yes, from yes, the yes. Eververse. But it's also cool things to earn, and you can wear these, like, masks um, to kind of dress up your guardian. But I will say, if you read the uh, Bungie update, you can check out Fireteam Chat as well. We went over it last Friday. No, you don't but promo we, them anymore. <laughs> absolutely. Um, but they basically are doing some new stuff. There's going to be a new mission that's opened up later on, and there's some quest line stuff to do. So actually, there's a little more meat on the bone on this one. I believe there's also a legendary uh, auto rifle or something that you can earn. So, so yeah, they got some good stuff on this one if you're a big Destiny fan. Okay, and Forsaken's been awesome. So I was far. gonna say you're everybody's. It seems like everybody's back on the positive swing of Destiny. Oh right? my goodness, they really course correct that I could go on, you know, for a whole I show. Know you could, yeah. But they they have so much content out there, and it really feels like the glory days of Destiny One. Year uh, late into year two and into year three, but I've been having tons of fun, and the grind is real. But um, yeah, but it's fun. We should play sometime. No, the grind, I can't do I know, that. I can't fit that in. We can't catch you up anymody. I got Odyssey. I got Astrobot. I got Lego. Palm. I got Red Dead. I got Palm Reading. If it's easy, if the trophies are there, I got to do Palm Reading tonight. I just can't. I'm sorry. I love you. I can't. Exactly. Deals of the day for you. They've announced the Diablo 3 Switch bundle. Here's the official word from Nintendo. The devil is literally in the details of a new Nintendo Switch bundle featuring Blizzard's legendary game, Diablo 3 Eternal Collection. Launching exclusively at GameStop on November 2nd, fans who pick up the devilish bundle will receive a Nintendo <laughs> Switch system and dock featuring Diablo 3 artwork, a download code for Diablo 3 Eternal Collection game, and a themed carrying case, all at a retail price of $359.99. Plus your soul. No. <laughs> Diablo 3 Eternal Collection contains the full classic game, as well as all the expansion content, the rise of the Necromancer and Reaper of Souls. In addition, fans who play a Nintendo Switch version will receive in-game items that are only available on the Nintendo's hit console. These in-game bonuses include a variety of items from the Legend of Zelda series, including Ganondorf Transmog Armor, a companion cuckoo pet, and a golden Triforce portrait frame. I like the way you say Puyo Puyo and Puyo Puyo. Cuckoo. 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 Hey, man. When you're Greg Miller, you're out there without a net. <laughs> you, yeah, just, right. you just see a word you don't know, you steamroll right through it. Go you just it. keep on going. Uh, time for Reader Mail. 
But first, I'll tell you, it's brought to you by Hims, Me Undies, and Loot Crate. Let's start with Hims. 66% of men lose their hair by age 35, and the thing is, once you start to notice hair loss, it's too late. It's easier to keep the hair you have than replace it. How do I know? Nick and Andy on the other side of the wall are using Hims right now. For Hims.com, it's a one-stop shop for hair loss, skincare, sexual wellness, and more for men. What they did is they went there, took photos of their hairline, sent them in, talked to a doctor online. He uh, uh, subscribe or prescribed these medicines. They're cheaper because they're generic they sent them over here and now nick continues to eat andy's hair loss gummies and andy gets mad every day <laughs> thanks to science baldness can be optional hymns connects you with real doctors and medical grade solutions to treat hair loss there's no waiting room no awkward in doctor in-person doctor visits save hours by going to forhims.com uh, my listeners get a trial month of hymns for just five dollars today right now while supplies last see the website for full details this would cost hundreds if you went to a doctor or a pharmacy go to forhims.com slash games daily that's f-o-r R-H-I-M-S dot com slash games daily for hymns dot com slash games daily. Let's talk about me undies. You've heard me obsess over my e- me undies and all the amazing colors and prints they offer. But guys, did you know that me undies also makes the world's most comfortable lounge pants and tees this fall? Well, with fall, finally here. There's no better time to put on these cozy essentials to the test. Everyone knows I only wear MeUndies. I threw away the rest of my underwear when I found out how much I loved MeUndies. And I've only ever bought them. They've never sent them to me for free. What the F, but I'll leave it alone. Uh, I am going to buy these lounge pants as well, because they're the best fabric and they're super, super soft. Kevin, am I lying? No. The lounge pants are made from the same micro-modal fabric as their undies, uh, and you'll be in fall heaven, and you cover your half, uh, your bottom half of the fabric that's three times softer than cotton. MeUndies also is celebrating the fall season with fun Halloween prints. Check out their latest jack o prints in undie socks and bralettes. And the best part, when you join the membership, you can get all this stuff, everything they make, for less than anybody else. MeUndies is a great offer for my listeners uh, and for any first, or for any first-time purchasers. When you purchase any MeUndies, you get 15% off and free shipping. It's a no-brainer. Get 15% off and a pair of the most comfortable undies or lounge pants you'll ever put on. To get your 15% off, your first pair of free shipping and a 100% satisfaction guarantee, go to MeUndies.com slash games daily. That's MeUndies.com slash games daily. And rounding out the trio, Loot Crate. Uh, I love Loot Crate. They have a thing called Gaming Crate now, but they send you all these different things. You ever use the Loot Crate, Fran? I've not used it myself. You're a monster. I know of Loot you Crate. Well, you always get it at IGN. I don't I, really have to. because I just got the Loot Crates in. here, and what I got out of it was a Foxhound glass. A Ooh. Foxhound pint glass from the one and only Metal Gear, and I love it very much. Uh, this month's theme, because every theme has or every month has a theme, is Nightmare. Fight back against malevolent forces and gear up with stuff from Soul Calibur 2, Silent Hill, Psychonauts, and Cuphead. What is Loot Gaming? It's a monthly subscription box delivered directly to your door with exclusive pop culture collectibles, apparel, and gear. Loot Gaming Loot Gaming curates, designs, everything themselves, and you won't find these anywhere else. They give you $60 of value in each crate for less than $29 a month. Uh, right now, this crate's going to sell out, the October 1 nightmare. You must order by the end of this week to guarantee yours. Get the best surprises each month from the largest geek and gaming subscription company, Geek Out in Style Loot Crate. Subscribe now by going to lootcrate.com slash games and enter my code games to save an exclusive 30% off your subscription. That's lootcrate.com slash games, my code games for 30% off. Oh, Fran, where do I want to yeah, take you? I will say, remember, these are not just ads, but a great way to support the show. It's not on the script, but it's true, right? It's not just an ad. It supports the show. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, so, yeah. Way. No, but our, our kids are good about oh, it. I know they know yeah, that. Yeah. Just a little extra. One guy was like, can real. you put music behind your ad so I can skip <laughs> faster? And I was like... No, I don't. No, think. Come on. no I can't do that. Actually, that's like yeah. that's a that's a lost leader for the people. Yep. Um, friend, you mentioned that there Assassin's Creed, it's right? So good. Oh, Kevin has as well. Kevin, <laughs> now you're you were all big talk trying to beat it this week. Did you beat it this weekend? No, man, not even close. Remember when I was like, oh, I'm just gonna power through it. Turns out I didn't. The you enjoyed massive. the ride. I enjoyed the ride. Okay. Way too much. Yeah. Too what much. you told me? What is it? What are you at right now according to UB Club? Um, I haven't checked since I told you, but then it was 75 hours. 75 hours into this game. Oh my yeah. goodness. Yikes. And that, yeah, it's like probably scratching the surface from what I've seen. I yeah. haven't had a chance to play it. it oh yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah. Oh my god, I'm so in love with One it. One of those things I want to make time to do is play a game like Assassins. It's on my list right now. Here we go. Whisper writes in and says, hey Greg and mystery host, my question is, now that you've, and this is mainly for me since you haven't even touched it, I won't accept your answer. Uh, you finished AC Odyssey, which is your favorite Odyssey? Assassin's Creed or Super Mario? I know they are very <laughs> different games, but which one is better? Which game is in your favorite too? Do you think there's a difference between a game being your favorite and the best game? Thanks, Whisper. There is there a is huge a difference. Uh, yes. So yeah, I beat the story of Assassin's Creed over the weekend. I'm at 53, 54 hours oh, on wow. my save. Dang, you're efficient. 
Hey man, I'm out there. I'm hustling. And I did the microtransaction thing too. There's so many things you can do though. I know. Well, that's the thing is I beat it and I'm by no means done. I have a whole bunch of cult members to go after. I I, (laughs) I, I would like to platinum it. Will it happen? Who knows? Will it happen before Red Dead? No fucking way. But I'd like to do it one day and all stuff. What I what is better, Assassin's Creed Odyssey or Super Mario? Totally different games. Yeah. Such a weird question to ask. But the answer is Super Mario. I mean, come on. Like, I mean, like, it's the thing. I love Assassin's Creed. I'm having a great time. Super Mario is polished in every aspect. Whereas Assassin's Creed does have its weird hangups here and there. But again, completely different games. I also say this knowing that, you know, last year, uh, uh, Odyssey, Super Mario was my game of the year. That's the one I was thumping oh, yeah. for. That's what I voted for. Zelda won, whatever. Yes. You know what I mean? Whatever. T- okay, but Zelda was amazing. Zelda was right? amazing, too. I but loved it. Was, it, I loved it was a tough too. choice. Yeah. Exactly. This year, Odyssey's on my... Definitely going to be... If I, if I get invited back to Giant Bomb for a top 10 list, it's going to be on there. But it's... I mean, God of War is still my yep. game of the year this year. Based so, on huh? what you've experienced, is Assassin's Creed Odyssey the best Assassin's Creed for you? Based on my experience, yes. Seems that way, man. I, 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 and I've, we've talked about this a little bit, but to recap, like, right, fell in love with the series with two in Ezio. Uh, loved Brotherhood. Kind of drifted. I was in and out of them for a while. Thought Black Flag's gameplay was the best. Mm. But then, I think this one, this yeah. is the best story. Like, up, I mean, like, until the end. Like when when the final cutscenes played out yesterday for me, and there's different endings, mm. I, I put it on the controller. I turned it. I'm like, what a game! What yeah. a fucking game! And like I was, I That's mean, awesome I've been, in, and then not to mention the gameplay and how much I want to go back and how much I want to do other stuff. Yeah, yeah, it. it looks incredible. Are you think you'll actually get into it? Oh me? Yeah. I just gotta find the time. I mean, it's funny. This is my first day that yeah. I'm like, come on, unraveling to like, yeah. I mean, I still have okay. to start creating, you know, new bit lines of business. But uh, dude, I want to play that game bad. So. Uh, what's your game of the year? Andy from England writes in and says, question. Greg, you've mentioned several times recently that you love Assassin's Creed Odyssey, and now that you've completed it, I was wondering if you feel it stacks up with your two current front runners. I presume for Game of the Year, God of War and Spider Man. Can it be considered on that level, or is it slightly below, say, um, sp- slightly below and say a Monster Hunter World tier? Good luck getting that platinum before your Red Dead code arrives. Andy. Yeah, I'm still. God of War is still yeah. my game of the year. Me too. Spider Man was an amazing experience, and I love Spider Man. I think it's an awesome, incredible game, but I, I don't think it, it beat God of War. Yeah. And I, same with Odyssey, where I think Odyssey's awesome, but I don't think this beats Spider Man. Yeah. Yeah, there's almost something to be. I mean, God of War is huge, but I almost feel like in some ways, when the games get too big and there's, you know, it throws the pace off, it's yeah. not that Spider Man and Assassin's, uh, again, I haven't played those yet, but I've seen plenty of them. There's such a, a Desti- getting there. You have hundreds of hours to play Destiny. <laughs> I do night. now. Every do night now. you're playing it. A lot of Destiny as well. But, um, the pace and polish of God of War just just blew my mind. And this is something I think Kevin and I, or Kevin touched on this morning, where I was like, well, where are you in the story? And Kevin told me, and he's like, am I close? And he's also like, is also, am I going to be on this quest forever? Because there are quests that have in Odyssey that are like, you unlock it, and it's like, okay, cool, do these four things. He's like, oh, I see how we're going to keep this quest going. Whereas God of War, I always felt like it was moving at a good clip, and it had me going. And not that I'm, I think Odyssey, Odyssey drags, yeah. but I definitely... All right, now I'm running across the map to this other point of interest or whatever for Odyssey. Yeah. It was a different it's a different vibe, but it yeah. definitely it, fucks with the pacing in a different way. Yeah. And honestly, just the combat in God of War is so polished yep. and the tactile feel of it, yep. it just it kept drawing me in. And actually, this was one of those games that normally this rarely happens to me, but normally I want to go right through the campaign, yeah. so to speak, right? This had me going to those little side areas yep. and trying to like get the special items, complete my armor sets and stuff. And a few games do that, but man, God of War was just No, incredible. me too. That and that's yeah. the thing is like God of War I felt like was such a total 100% out of a pack it's a package yeah. and I wanted to do everything we'll see if Red Dead can can take the we throne will this see. year yeah we will see Red Dead all I'm eyes excited. are on them are you excited Kev? for Red Dead? yeah yeah I'm so excited Good scared that I can't finish Odyssey beforehand though will you sure. turn off the map marker so you just have to get your uh, points of interest from I'm the gonna, local NPCs I'm gonna tinker with it and see but like that seems like asking to, but it's like, like for it to take like 500 hours to Odyssey's finish. exploration yeah. mode is similar. Yeah. Right? Have you heard about this? Where there's the normal Assassin's Creed. When you start, it's like, do you want guided or do you want exploratory? Oh, yeah. And if you do the exploration one, it's like they take away the, go as soon go as you here. get a quest, go, go here. here. You have to actually look at a map and figure it out and piece it together. And it's like, well, it's north of the, the you yeah. know, the mint it's or whatever. Fun. We don't have I time I like it, too. That. 
Did no, you play it that I, way? I did play it that no way. No way. Yeah. Wow. And you still well, beat it in 50 some hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh. But, but I mean, well, at the yeah, end there, I was like, I want to I wanna go to the story stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. But uh, I, I love the concept in Red Dead, though. When I read that, I was like, that is so yeah. cool. Like, just the idea of, like, you, like, have to talk go to someone. Go to the main willow tree and see the old burnt cactus and then go past the Hard to believe we weren't hired as one of the 7,000 voice actors. Well, you and the jellicers, it's the old Dutch gang. There's a snake in my boot. We're just doing Toy Story now. Chris from Missouri, M-I-Z, writes in to kindoffunny.com slash KFGD and says, This past weekend, I went on a guy's trip with a group of friends to a, quote, gamer's ranch. That has video games and especially board games. Gamersranch.com. The ranch <laughs> had both an HTC Vive and a PSVR set up. And, I was, and it was the first time I was able to really sink my teeth into VR. First, Beat Saber is awesome. Oh, so good. Preach, sir. Preach. Wait, is yeah. that out? Oh, wait, wait. Not it's on, it's not on Vive, on but yeah, they still haven't put out. Yeah, yeah, it's announced and coming, but who knows when. Yeah. Second, I am now very interested in purchasing a PlayStation VR. Here's my question. Do you think it's a good time to purchase PlayStation VR? We just hit the two-year anniversary, so I am scared that if you purchase one now, that a new model is potentially right around the corner. And do you think there will be Black Friday-type deals on PSVR in the coming month? Thanks for all the content. Chris from Missouri. I think, so at the top, and I'm, I want to take away, is there a new one? I think it's a great time to buy PlayStation VR. As Jared and I were talking on Gamescast, and I think a little bit here on this show last time, like there's, you actually have a lineup now where you'd have a debate of, let's do a top 10 list, and there would be actually like, oof, what do I want to put on there? What do I not want to? Over the weekend, there was a tweet similar, or a tweet about like, hey, it's the two anniversary, what's your favorite game? And I listed a bunch, and then people started responding like, what about this? And I'm like, totally forgot about that. That is a great game that totally went under my radar. Yep. Like, I think there's enough out there to justify the purchase for sure, especially when you talk about there being an Astrobot plus Moss bundle, yeah. which are two amazing VR games. Yeah, what occurs to me is like platforms like this, especially at launch, they have this idea that it's a gimmick that's going to mm-hmm, fade mm-hmm. and like it was like 3D TVs and other experiences before that, uh, Virtual Boy. Um, <laughs> but like you think it's going to fail, right? But it's been... How long now? Two it's years. Been they two just had years. the two-year anniversary. And but even in that time, they've just added so much to it. So yeah, that's where like I think it started as a question, and now it's like, dude, if you like VR, absolutely. Yeah. And my the only thing holding me back is Beat Saber's not on it yet. So otherwise, dude, Beat Saber when I get there, killer so app. Good. Tetris Effect, killer app. Like uh, they have oh, some amazing I seen shit that yet. Uh, I'm sorry, Kevin Koala from KindOfFunny.com. Oh, so Fran, how? No, that's wrong. <laughs> how, <laughs> do you, how? How dare you? Oh fuck. Put 3D TVs in the same like <laughs> echelon as Virtual Boy. Boy. Ridiculous. It sucked. T- uh, 3D uh, TVs no, suck. No, they do not suck. Oh they actually God, work. Kevin. They're garbage. It doesn't matter that stupid. they nobody You're wants garbage. to watch that. There, it's Lots a dead format. Like it. James Cameron sucks there for trying to make those. What's oh, wrong good. with him? He's the law of the dude. I swear to start. We need another 51 minutes for me to explain everything wrong with Kevin. Uh, in terms of will there be a price drop? Uh, will, uh, Black Friday bundles? I assume. Yeah. That'll be retailer to retail. That there'll be discounts on PlayStation VR, of course. I think you you can find that no problem. Uh, when will they re- release the next PlayStation VR headset? Great question. I don't see it being E3 this year. And then if that doesn't happen, I don't know if you do it in the same year you're talking about PlayStation 5. Right, I know. Because then you're talking about two giant things. I think I don't... It could happen right before PlayStation 5, which does put us in the spitting window now, or right after PlayStation yeah. 5, for my money. Yeah, I mean, what's the main thing they need with the hardware? The resolution. Yeah, the problem, resolution, right? the screen door That's effect. The thing get a better that, le- a screen in there. Yeah. And I just don't... Right now, the thing you can hang your hat on with PlayStation VR is like, hey, yeah, there's better VR units, but for the price, for Affordable. the library, for the yeah. ac- accessibility. Yep. You're just plugging this into a system and going. Yeah, for the price and the games available, it really can't be beat right now. Yeah, so yeah. I think they're just leaning into that until it gets big enough. Yeah, and so yeah. I, I would think not, but I also think if you could get it on a deal at Black Friday, I don't think you're going to lose that much in terms of like yeah. here comes the hotness of what yeah. that would even and cost. Yeah, and I assume that any games you buy would work on the next hardware. Oh, that, hardware that thing, for sure. Right? Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. you're pretty safe on that front. Uh, Chris from Lone on Leon Lonion La, Low Neon Chris from Low Neon were to say writes into kind of funny.com slash KFGD and says I'm just sitting here playing Fallout Shelter and it made me wonder are there any mobile games which you guys just couldn't stop playing even long after their lifespan you ever get into a mobile game frame uh, you know what I actually was into Pokemon Go for a while oh, here we go so there was that yeah, yeah but that was right during launch and I just was trying to catch them all you know sure yeah I, yeah, didn't, yeah I didn't think I would get into it but man I was buying the Pokeballs and everything yeah yeah, yeah. outside of that um it, you know and it strikes me as this is my first day as a free man every time I picked up my phone I was on email so I wasn't 
I'm not against mobile gaming. Yeah, yeah. But um, just not a it device you usually thing. play with. Although, wait, I should add two things that stuck out to me. I do like um, Impossible Runners, okay. um, or whatever they call them, Endless Runners. So there was this game, Impossible Road, which I loved. It's just like taking this ball down a track. There's a lot of games out there like that that I really like. Um, that, and then of course the Room series, which was more on like the iPad and stuff. But um, the Room, which just got announced for Nintendo Switch, I believe. But those types of games, I like know Myst. What, the, what is the Room? Oh, it's awesome. Oh, okay. It's like Myst. Okay. Uh, so you just like go in a room and solve puzzles it's awesome so actually check it out on switch um years old there's like room three now maybe four i don't even know but so those i got into yeah but it was always when i was like flying or when i couldn't like have a connection sure what about uh, you? for me right the, there's three that jump to mind number one game dev story oh which yeah. when that dropped that would there was i mean but that was just a solid week i would say of non-stop playing on the on the bart to and from ign at the time uh sparkade do you remember sparkade no it's something that we did a sponsorship with them it would have been not last year, the year before, right, Kevin? Does that sound right? Yep. 2016, they launched this app uh, that was classic games. You could play within the app, but you played against each other, other people, and you you could either bet with in-game currency or real money. So, And I was such a Tetris fiend that I, I got up to like 100 bucks of tet- of real money in there that from people I was winning. <laughs> and I, had, I, was, I was legitimately obsessed with it for a while, where it was like I'd come home and not play real ga- not real games, quote unquote, <laughs> on my console. I'd right. sit there and play Tetris on my phone to try to best this score to try to yeah. earn more money. Even though it wasn't about the money, it was just about, hey, here's a tangible reward to playing. Yep. He's got yeah, these kids. It, it's actually it's funny. There were more games now that are coming back to me. Like yeah. I was really into Fire Emblem when it launched. Sure, awesome mobile. And game I was thinking Tetris had leveling and all the stuff. Yeah, new unlocks. And I was like, yeah, I'm trying to do all this it, stuff. There's so much out there on mobile actually. Yeah. So it's really it's where you play it and why. You know, yeah. I know. And for me right now, it, and it's going to be next week for all yeah. all fucking systems go. Ghostbusters World. Yeah. And so full disclosure, of course, I was I got to I got cast in the commercial, and we're working on a sponsored let's play or party mode for them soon. So if you want to take it with a grain of salt, go ahead. But y'all know I'm a huge ghost head, and it's Pokemon Go with Ghostbusters. Yeah. And it, the build I have, which is not launch, obviously, runs well enough, and I'm out there busting ghosts. And so yeah. is that like I turned a corner last night of like. Man, I'm just building up these coins. What is that for? And I, I lost to, I couldn't, I was doing a thing and I, the ghost got away. Mm-hmm. And at the end, it's like, well, you know, maybe you should consider upgrading your weapons. Like, I can upgrade my weapons. Uh. And then I went into the upgrade tree now, the RPG of making my proton pack. And it's, this is where they get into the microtransactions where right. it's in you can game. buy some. In, no, no, in game currency to upgrade my stuff, right? And I have tons of in game currency. Mm-hmm. However, it's the thing of like, cool, we're researching your new particle thrower, which means that for 15 minutes, this is what we're working on. Unless you want to use a gem right now or whatever to do it. And I don't want to use gems. Oh, so, so you can speed up your progression. Exactly. That's how they do it. And that's how Pokemon does it too, right? Of like, hmm. hey, do you want to walk around this egg for a while? Or, you know, use the right. gems right now. It's that it's kind like of stuff. It's like XP acceleration type stuff. Exactly. But you can't just do it over and over and over again to like... About, I think if you want to spend all the money, yeah. yeah but yeah, this yeah, is yeah. that's the PVE stuff, so who cares? Gotcha. That's you doing it. PVE that's cool. P is yeah, a I, different thing. I saw it. It looked good, man. Uh, and I, like I said, I got caught up on Pokemon Go. Yeah. Kind of got just, I couldn't keep up with it. I'm actually excited to try. I'm it very out. much in not the, sponsored it's just, on mine. No, yeah, no, yeah. It's, it's very much. I'm in that like uh, the thing I was talking about with like uh, uh, I'm a Darth Maul at the end of episode one, where the gates are closed and I'm just pacing back oh, and forth, yeah. ready to go because I'm playing the game. But since it's they're gonna wipe servers, but until I can't. Invest as much as I want to. Like, I'm still doing dimensional doors, which are like Pokestops and all that right. shit, but it's like, what is this for? I just like it. Yeah. I know. Exactly. You go as far as to like educate yourself on what you need to know. Yeah. Yeah. Then but I don't want too far. I don't want to eat so much that I don't want to have exactly. the real dish have to do it all over again when it comes out. You know what That's I mean? Right. Oh, do we want a final question? Hmm. There's so many good ones. It's hard to choose. Uh, yeah. Kevin? Yep. You get to decide, all right? I'm listening. Do you want to talk about, and you're, don't just yell out the one you want before I say them all. Okay. Fortnite dances? Yeah, Fortnite. Do you want to talk about <laughs> Xbox Game Pass? Mm-hmm. Or do you want to talk about a rumored PlayStation message that bricks your console? Oh, fuck. Oh, Let's do that one. Michael Angelou writes in to kindoffunny.com slash KFGD and says, PSA announcement. I saw this article, and then it's a tweet, but it doesn't matter, about how there is someone who is sending messages via the PlayStation Network that can possibly brick your system. They are advising us to change our privacy settings to honor messages to private, something that can be done from the PSN uh, messages app, so better safe than sorry. Saw this break over the weekend. I forget who tweeted it. One of uh, who's the uh, One Punch Man is their avatar. Uh, not Titus. Mm. Somebody like that. You know who I'm talking about. Kind of funny. Com slash wrong. And I went in and it was a reset era thread, or maybe an r slash gaming thread about hey, 
there's this message that got sent to all my team while we were playing Rainbow Six and it bricked all of our consoles and we all had to factory reset them and back and forth, back and forth. And you look at the message sent and it's like something in another language and then it's like the question marks from iOS, like yeah. when you don't yeah. have the latest software. Have the, yeah. And so I immediately went and changed my PSN messages to private because I don't know what the fuck's going on. Yeah. And there were all these other people saying like, it's happened to me, it's done this, you gotta do this. And if you apparently turn on your PSN, your PlayStation, and you've gotten the message. If you see the preview or you go into your messages, it's going to brick your unit. What? But, and this is all rumor and speculation. Right. I was like, is this validated? But yeah, if you go into your PSN uh, app uh, for messages, you can delete it there before anything would happen to your console. So, I don't know. Some people were like, this is bullshit. How would that possibly happen? And I was like, the, the people popping up like, you, no, no, you'd be surprised. Like, if, it, if the system can't handle what that is it doesn't know what to do and it flips the fuck out i have not seen an official thing from playstation i have not seen anyone officially report on this it is just rumor and scuttlebutt on the dark web as they say yeah but i definitely sent my messages to private kevin quilla didn't we have something similar happen with not bricking but with iphones where if you sent a certain message with a black dot it would um shut down your phone you don't remember that i am unfamiliar with that yeah, yeah. no i mean i like i'm certain of it like i actually looked at videos like uh, kind of breaking down what was happening. Yeah. And it was just exactly that. It couldn't interpret stuff, so it got into a loop where it just kept trying to interpret the message. Uh, so it's very possible that something like this could happen. So, yeah, I, yeah. I, it was something I would imagine would be patched somewhat quickly, if real. There'd be a statement, if real. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know if anybody's out there shaking down the thing. I, I yeah. kind of forgot over the weekend. Yeah, I was looking on Ask PlayStation just to see if anything was on their official yeah. Twitter feed. I've not seen anything yet. So. Yeah. So... Something out there. If you see weird messages Scary, coming though. through, yeah, don't fuck Better with that. I don't want to fuck with that shit. Right, come on now. But don't I backed up my, my saves. You what was that, Kev? Don't fuck with it. Don't fuck with it. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is usually where we squat at, but I forgot to put one in there. It's been a <laughs> Rick Rowan morning. <laughs> Instead, I'll take you to the new segment that we have with a limited time called the final bad PSN names. As you know, Fran, Shuhei Yoshida no longer hates us and is going to allow <laughs> us to change our PSN names, which means we need to say goodbye to bad PSN names. I've asked people to write in to kindoffunny.com slash KFGD with their bad PSN, their personal bad PSN names and the reasons why. Now, we've done the crass before on Beyond, on PS mm -hmm. I Love You. These are more heartfelt stories so far, which I appreciate. Like Kim's. Kim writes in, to kindoffunny.com slash KFGD and says, bad PSN name incoming. So with the news that we will be able to change our PSN names, man, was I quietly excited. The name I have is VRKA1. Sounds harmless enough, but it was one of those dumb kids slash teenage things. So the VR is the initials of the girl I was with at the time, and the <laughs> KA is mine, of course. Of course, that relationship didn't last, so it's super super awkward to tell my current partner when she asks what your ID is uh, after what your uh, what your na ID is named after because she wants to ask because she forgets and I got and I got well it's an old girlfriend awkward so finally I can't wait 2019 to change my name also first time writer a long time listener love all the shows and the team does thanks for listening to my awkward story Kim. Yeah, that's a, that's a bad one. Kid. You're not the only one out there probably with that. That's not my story, but um, I, I know those are out there. Yeah. Oh, my God. There's so many people tied up with just. And that's the thing is, again, we used to be you write in with a bad name. You did something. You're stupid as your kid. You saw somebody doing yeah. some of the whatever. Bong you write in 420. Exactly. Like, now you're writing like, all oh, right, this one's uh, that is uh, awkward to be like, well, this is why this. Happened. Oh, my God. It's never good when you open you're wrong and there's 32 uh -oh. responses. Really? Yeah. It's Hopefully they're all just saying the same thing, but you never know. You know what I mean? It's terrible. Uh, I mean, you know, ladies and gentlemen. Corrections. We ask you watching live on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games to go to kind of funny.com slash you're on and tell you. Tell us what we got wrong, what we screwed up, <laughs> and then we set the record straight for everybody watching later on youtube.com slash kind of funny games, listening on podcast services around the globe. Capitalist Pig says the Walt Williams book I referenced was significant zero. The Polygon article is what I also the other thing. Uh, no, nope, we don't care about that. A lot of people they want to come in and just this is something just drop you know, in a no, comment. This isn't, yeah, come yeah, on yeah, now. Yeah, That's yeah, not yeah. cool. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, Carson from Utah says, as per Xbox.com, Halo Infinite is exclusive to Xbox One and Windows 10. We had that question of, like, is it going to be a next-gen thing or whatever? Yeah. They have gone on the record saying Xbox One. Hmm. But again, what will what will hmm. Xbox Two be? Yeah. Hmm. Uh, 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 um, it's just 30 oh, Halo things. Zyger writes in and says regarding oh. Fran streaming, Fran forgot to mention that if you sub to him on Twitch, twitch.tv slash FM3 underscore, Zyger. you also get a hair tip. So for people looking for good hair tips, sub to Fran. Fran, he has really cool emotes. 
That's very nice, Iger. Thank you. Great hair, too. Kebab <laughs> says it has been a requirement since mid-2008 that all new releases on PlayStation have trophies, with the exception of PS Minis on PS3 uh, and PSP. Yes, but again, I, I know there's been games that haven't done it. Um, Got you, Zyger. Mm, <laughs> DLX Fuentes tries to nail me down and says Diablo 3 Eternal Collection will be available at, or this is the bundle, and at, at uh, in Canada at EB Games. There are no GameStops in Canada. Uh, EB is GameStop. GameStop is EB. Y'all got oh! fucked, son. Oh, you can't fucking get him. He's like Jello. You can't nail him down. <laughs> uh, nope. Don't care. That's fine. Nope. Not no, too no, bad no. so far. No. Yeah. This is fine. Yeah. No, no, no. No, 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 no. Mm -hmm, You're mm -hmm. going to have to change it to um, slash Fran's wrong. Seems Ignacio to be Rojas writes in and says, Fran asked what's wrong with Kevin. The short answer, a lot. <laughs> yeah, he not agrees. you're wrong. Just saying. I like that one. I'm putting that out of there. <laughs> uh, Zaire says uh, Disgaea 5 is com or complete is coming on October 22nd to Steam. Mm. What if the developers from the palm reading game wrote in and <laughs> that would be the best? Listen here, motherfuckers. We got trophies. We got I'd trophies. be like, yeah. Fran was ah, right. Lord of Pwn says Nibel is the one punch man uh, avatar on Twitter. Thank you very much. Oh, that, that's where we got a lot of people writing in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Oh, uh, Neo, Aoshi, Neo Aoshi says Sony has released a statement on Twitter about that thing. This is from the Ask uh, PS underscore UK. Oh, uh, we've since fixed the issue and it wasn't bricking consoles, just sending them into a crash loop that can be quickly fixed in under five minutes. Delete the message from the PSN, play, the PlayStation mobile app, go into safe mode, use option five and the console will be back to normal. So there you go. All is well. We're fine. Thank you guys for that. Thank you, Blackjack, for writing in with that, too. Uh, Zyre says, new date for you. Corpse Party Book of Shadows comes on October 29th to PC. Corpse Party 2 this winter. And then there you go. Nailed it. That's it. Not yeah. terrible. Not, Not terrible. too bad. A lot of additive information, which I'm always a fan of. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if you didn't know, this has been Kind of Funny Games Daily. Each and every week down a variety of platforms, we run you through the nerdy video game news you need to know about. If you like that, be part of the show. Kindoffunny.com slash KFGD questions comments concerns bad psn names in the final weeks here everything else under the video game sun watch it live on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games watch it later on youtube.com slash kind of funny games listen on podcast services around the globe hosting schedule goes like this tuesday andrea renee returns with youtube's alex Yay! rubens wednesday it's me and gary Witta. thursday it's me and jared and friday it's me and andrea renee fran mirabella congratulations on this new chapter of your life Thank you for having me. Uh, are you, when will you be streaming today? All day long? Is it a celebration? You getting a cake? You going home right away? Streaming oh, for 24 yeah, hours? Right? He's streaming for 48 <laughs> hours! He just said it! Oh my god! I'm playing Balm Reader all day. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, it's funny to not have a schedule, but I always play late. I'll be playing later tonight, but I do want to get on um, sometime today, this afternoon. So and I think that's the there. most interesting thing about this, is you're very much figuring it out still, right? Like yeah. what you want to do and how you want to do it. So people should come to your Twitch and be part of the community and talk to you about what they want to see. Exactly. Yeah, again, I want to stream during the day, right? But I'm not a content creator by trade anymore. That's what's weird. Sure. I went from reviewing Majora's Mask to being in charge of the business uh, video at IGN. And yeah, so, yeah, yeah. like, there's a lot of stuff out there. I want to do three things. You know, one is creating content, like on Twitch, possibly on YouTube. If you want to support me, do that. Then come find me. Uh, Twitch is obviously the current place, but you can find me on Twitter as well. Sure. Second thing is creating awesome video productions like you guys do here every day. Going out, creating stuff like, you ever saw that show Expert Mode that I did? I it was did. an interview. Stuff like that. I, I almost love Hosted one. That's right. We talked about it. Um, so I would love to continue to do stuff like that, whether it's with IGN or developers sure. or whoever. And the third thing, of course, is like video business stuff. So if there's someone who wants to be the next Twitch or YouTube or just has like a channel like yours and is like, how do I figure YouTube out? Well, I've been doing that a long time. Uh, we just got our 10 million sub button at IGN. Uh, yeah. And you're like, done. Yeah, exactly. I'm out that now. Was it. It was like I'm out. But um, I was there for all ten million. I'm I want to do all that, but um, more than anything, I want to have a career in this business, and I've always had that, and I'm not going anywhere. So I can't wait to to just get out there. I'm proud of you, Fran. Thank you for having everybody. Me. Follow this man. Subscribe to this man. And no, until next time, it's been our pleasure to serve you. <laughs>